My name is Chris Tiffany, and I toured for a total of four seasons with Montana Shakespeare in the Parks between 1991 and 1997. However, I did grow up in Bozeman, so um, I had been watching Montana Shakespeare in the Parks performances since I was just a young lad in doublet and hose. I have to say that working for Montana Shakespeare in the Parks was truly a life-changing experience. Uh, not only did I get to visit and get to know dozens of amazing communities throughout Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and Alberta. Yes, we actually did used to tour to Canada. Uh, I got to work with terrific theater artists and make many lifelong friends. I do have to say that uh, touring with Montana Shakespeare in the Parks was probably one of the best jobs that I ever had, um, but it was definitely also one of the hardest. Our postcard today is from Gardner, Montana. Located on the Yellowstone River, Gardner was the original entrance to Yellowstone National Park. The town was established uh, just a few years after the park itself was created in 1872. And that distinction is still honored today with the uh, renowned Roosevelt Arch. Gardner is also known as being the southernmost gateway to Paradise Valley, uh, home to movie stars, uh, artists, farmers, ranchers, hot springs, and of course the, the amazing scenic views that give the valley its name. Because of its proximity to Yellowstone, uh, Gardner is also known for the uh, wildlife that tends to roam the streets of the town, along with the tourists and the natives. Now, whenever we toured to Gardner, um, unfortunately, we, we didn't tend to stay there overnight because we were only about an hour and a half away from Bozeman, so we would just go home after the show. But we always had terrific audiences there, and um, most of the time they were human, but uh, Every once in a while, we'd get a, a, a few of the four-legged variety showing up as well. One of my favorite memories uh, from touring with Montana Shakespeare in the Parks uh, was a performance of Henry V that we didn't do actually in Gardner, but we did just down the road in Mammoth Hot Springs. And, and yes, we actually did use to tour into Yellowstone itself. Um, we set up the stage uh, across the road from the little medical clinic there in Mammoth. I think the location now is the Yellowstone Justice Center, but at the time it was just a, a grassy field uh, with a ridge behind it covered in scrub brush. Uh, this production of Henry V, directed by Joel Janke, uh, had some special effects during the Battle of Agincourt. We uh, had smoke machines, we had recorded cannon fire, and we had about a half a dozen actors standing backstage beating broadswords against shields and shouting things in French. Très mal homme. However, uh, unbeknownst to us, there was a herd of elk just on the other side of the ridge from where we were set up. And uh, once the battle began, the smoke, the cannon, the sword play, apparently spooked this herd of elk, uh, which at the time seemed to number about 200, but I think in reality was probably only 20 or 30. Um, and they stampeded over the ridge, through the backstage, through the Battle of Agincourt, around the audience, and on to safer pastures, uh, presumably somewhere in the south of France. Now, consummate actors that we were, we of course just played this off as, you know, we had this all planned, we, you know, worked with the National Park Service, we, we worked with the elk, uh, of course we worked with the renowned Yellowstone elk trainers, um, and this all happened exactly as we planned it. I'm, I'm certain that the audience totally bought it. This particular performance always makes me think of the opening monologue from Henry V, where the chorus says, Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. Um, basically, the chorus in this monologue is asking the audience to uh, use their imagination to 
flesh out the work that the actors themselves are doing on stage. A little later in the monologue, the chorus says, suppose within the girdle of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies, whose high, uprearid, and abutting fronts the perilous, narrow ocean parts asunder. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man and make imaginary puissance. Think when we talk of horses that you see them, printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth. For tis your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. Mm -hmm. 